Welcome to Explorer Classroom. My name is Vivette Dukes and I'm so glad you are joining us today. Here in the United States, we are celebrating Black History Month. It is important to recognize the contributions, the genius and the history of African-Americans year round. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. This school year, each month will be organized around a specific theme. This February, Explorer Classroom will be exploring the importance of exploration, especially as a tool to help us understand what we can learn from our world in order to better protect it. Today, our Explorer is none other than Florence Pupil. Florence is an award-winning photographer from Peru, a country in South America. She works in the Amazon rainforest and Andes Mountains with the people indigenous to that area, which means their families have lived there for many generations. Flor shares her photos in magazines and online to help people understand the stories of those who work and live in the Amazon and Andes. Today, she will share the genius of the farmers who plant a tasty and important crop, it happens to be one of my faves too, corn, or as you might say in Spanish, maíz. Before we get into today's lesson, however, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to Indus Industrial School, hi. West Jackson Middle School, hello there. Broward Virtual School, hey Broward. Milton Elementary School, nice to have you with us. St. Benedict CES, welcome to us. Higgins Middle School, hello. And all of the home schools out there. We are thrilled to have each and every one of you joining us. And with that, let's not waste any more time and get this Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to you, Floor, to share all about corn and the amazing farmers who grow it. Take it away, Floor. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Okay, perfect. So today I'm gonna tell you a little bit about corn about my project. The project I started in Peru, which is a country in South America. But before I tell you more, I would like you to locate Peru. So if this is the map of the American continent, and this is North America, and this is South America, where is Peru? If this is the United States, Peru is in the South. Then here, exactly, good, Peru. This is a photo of me in the mountains of Peru, photographing some llamas. This is where I started as a photographer. So at first doing landscapes, animal photos, any kind of photo that I really liked. But then one day I decided to photograph corn. So this is my first long project. A long project means that it's a project that lasts more than a year, more than two years. I started in 2018. So how many years ago? Long time, right? But why? So I would like to tell you why. My family comes from the Andes. So the Andes is the mountain range in Peru. They migrated to the city, leaving behind, their corn, potatoes, everything they grew from the land. So I grew up in the city, but I grew up with the stories of my family, the stories of my grandmother and the stories of my mother. Stories about corn. 
And this made me a very curious person. So let me tell you the story my mom used to tell me before I got to bed. This is a story about three students from the city of Cusco in the mountains that one day decided to go for a walk between the mountains, right? During their walk, they found a tunnel, a dark tunnel, everything made of rocks. It was not a tunnel like for the cars, for, no, it was a very wild place they never seen before. The three of them, these three students were super curious and they decided to get into this tunnel. Very dangerous decision, right? Because there was no light. They had no lamps with them, nothing. So they disappeared during three days. Nobody knew anything from them during three days until they found their way out. So the way out was actually in the city of Cusco from where they departed. The three of them came out of the tunnel. They were thirsty, they were starving, they were a little dirty as well. And the most important, one of the students had between their hands a corn made of gold, a golden corn. So my mom used to tell me this story before I go to bed. And I always wonder, is this story true? Is this really a corn made of gold? Can it be possible? But before I tell you more, do you know what's the Spanish word for corn? Some of you know? Yes? Of course, you can participate. It is maíz. Right, perfect. So then I went to Cusco when I was at my early 20s to ask people there, do you know the story about the golden horn? And everyone was telling me, yes, of course, we know this story. This story is true. So I ask, I don't know, I ask people working in the banks, people working in stores, people walking in the street. Everyone was telling me, yes, we know this story. Then I asked them, so, and where is this golden horn? This student found in the tunnel. But nobody could answer me this because nobody knew. So this is the mysterious part of the story. Nobody knows until today where this golden corn is. It's a mystery. This is how I started my project about corn, looking for the golden corn. But actually, I didn't find the corn that is made of gold, but I found farmers, I found stories, I found ways to relate to this corn, ways to, for example, grow corn. These are a group of singers singing the Harawi song, which is a special song they sing when it's time for growing corn. When they plant these little seeds in the ground, these ladies sing a special song. I will show you more in a few minutes. Then during this uh, mysterious quest, I found that there is more than 55 varieties of corn. Did you know this? There is so many sizes, shapes, color, colors, so many different corns out there. And I didn't know this. I found this when I was working and was asking about the varieties and all this. I had so many questions. But then how to find more? Because when I go to to visit some farmers, they show me one variety, maybe two varieties, maybe one color, two colors, three colors, but how can I, you know, discover even more? So then one day I met Mr. Sonko. Mr. Sonko. Sonko is a word in Quechua that means heart. So this man is called heart. And this is the way he liked to keep his red horn, just here, 
like a heart. So I photographed him and he really liked his photo and said to me, I am going to show you all my different types of corn. Would you like to see all these different types of corn and count them with me? So here we go. So this is a red one, just as Mr. Sonko was holding, right? It's a yellow with small pieces of red. What color is this? Is this purple? Or black, dark purple? This is one of my favorites. Look, this is white, but also pink. This is yellow again. What color is this? It's like red, it's like orange. It's like a fire color. This is my favorite, right? White one. And look at this one, so small. Like it's a purple small one. So how many do we have here? 10, that's perfect, you got it. So here are 10 different species of corn. But as I said, there are 55 in Peru. So I need to find out more, right? Many other colors. So I found so many beautiful stories about corn. I discovered there are songs. I discovered there are so many colors. I discovered that Mr. Sonko likes to hold his red corn like here, just in his heart. But I also discovered that they lack of rain. They work in the land, but the work is really hard. When there is no rain, the land gets super dry. And it's so very difficult to plant corn, as you can see here. So there are not only positive stories, there are also some negative ones because of climate change. So the work the Peruvian farmers do is very valuable. This is the way they like to take care of the seeds. Just as this baby, you see? As this baby is covered in this specific fabric, the little seeds too, because the corn seeds must be cared like babies. They're just like, you know, small little beans that need to be cherished, that need to be cared, just like this. And now I will show you the song. Would you like to hear some? So as I said, the woman, when it's about to plant little seeds such as just so, they like to sing to the corn. So the corn can grow happy, the corn can be cherished again. And this is the song.
me? Yes. What do you think of this song? Sometimes it's in a group of three people, but sometimes with only two. It's a very important song so the maize can grow happy. And all of this happens in the mountains of Peru. But also now I would like to show you this corn. Do you find it specific? Do you find it a little strange? Do you find it a little different from the rest of corn I've showed you before? It's different, right? Do you think it's made of clay? Look at this closely. So this is a very important part of my project because when I was asking about this golden corn, and then I was asking about these songs and colors and sizes and shapes, I found something else. So a farmer showed me this specific corn that at first I thought it was made of clay, but then I hold it and I waited and I thought this can't be made of clay. I think this is made of stone because it was very heavy. But then I kept asking, and how it is possible that people can sculpt a corn in the stone so perfectly because you can see the seeds and seeds are not just aligned like, you know, maybe in a draw or in a painting, but it's quite wild made, quite raw. So no, this can't be made of clay. This can't be sculpture, no. No, not possible. <laughs> I was, I had too many questions again. So I found a biologist in Peru that helped me in this quest. So he sent a um, sample to the Illinois University in the United States. So scientists could make the carbon 13 and the carbon 14 sample and test which meant, which means that they can, they can find out how old this stone is. This is stone. It's different, right? So scientists from from the Illinois University find out that this is actually true. It is a corn, but it's actually a fossil. And this fossil is. 8,000 years old, but 8,000 before Christ. And if your maths are good, if you take this 8,000 years before Christ and then 2023, because we are now into 2023, um, this means that this fossil is more than 10,000 years old. Can you believe that? 10,000 years. I am only 32. How old are you? 9, 10, 11, right? And how old is this fossil? 10,000. Can you believe that? Quite a big difference. Which means that humans before us used to grow this corn. <laughs> and what do you think led or leads us to have so many questions? What do you think leads us in our quest or in our curiosity? Or what is nourishing our projects or questions? I think I think there is like at least four things that we must keep in us all the time. So as I said, the first point is curiosity because we need to be curious of everything that is around us, right? Are you curious? Are you curious about the world that's around you? The second thing we must keep alive is the empathy. Because without empathy, for example, I couldn't understand the world of Peruvian farmers 
the, as I said, the positive parts of growing corn, but then also the negative parts. Like for example, the lack of rain. We need to keep ourselves empathic so we understand other people. The third point is to always listening. It is important to, that we listen to other stories because everyone's story is important and we need to listen to know how to listen every story, right? Like the farmer's story or like the story of the golden corn. And the fourth point is self-confidence. No matter what, you have to be confident about what you're doing and keep in track and keep going. So these are the four points, but there is so many things that I would like to share with you and so many other stories about corn. But I think our time is done and I would like to hear some questions. Maybe you have some questions. Yes, perfect. So wonderful. I won't look at corn the same way anymore. <laughs> Thank you again to Florence and all the students and teachers watching. We hope you join us for many more events. Our next event for ages nine to 14 will be next Thursday, February 23rd. Join explorer and ecologist Varun Swami as he shares how he uses drones and citizen science to study the life cycles of giant Amazon trees without needing to climb them. So go ahead and register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash explorer classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen. Fellow teachers, we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students so that you can take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. Find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each event registration page. With that, have a great day, everyone. And remember to stay curious and keep exploring.